Okay, so we got the daily losses from the 30 year average for sea ice here, bouncing up and down a bit from 0.7 to 0.6 and back up to 0.7, and the 30 year going half year ice free in 2042. Other than that, the main field goes uh, half year ice free in the late 2030s uh, and the general view here is that the pretty low daily loss figures are slightly catching up again you can see uh, it's heading up from here and also in the seven year average goes up from 0.5 to 0.7 so maybe this is uh, sort of the the lowest point in a multi-year cycle uh, to do with the um, La Nina and stuff and maybe it's gonna be more action as we come into uh, February data and the data for March later on. Well, okay, let's look at the uh, green and Antarctica. 
the uh, this is the land ice, the Antarctic ice sheet and the Greenland ice sheet, and um, I've included now because we have uh, sort of good data from the uh, Grace follow-up satellite. I've included three, one, two, and three-year averages for both of these, uh, so that they are always included, even though they are, you know, lower than the the lower threshold of point. 7 or 0.6 earlier. So I wrote in the headline that uh, it's complicated. Is Antarctica really uh, pulling, going past Greenland in the daily uh, ice losses? Uh, you can see here that you have uh, uh, the nine year is uh, comparable to the nine year in Antarctica, uh, and it looks like, for the time being, that uh, uh, Greenland has higher numbers, even for the three year average, um, which is Grace follow up, and also for the one year and two year averages, uh, Greenland is level with Antarctica or higher, uh, and the complicated bit is to do with the um, with the way uh, these ice sheets melt. Uh, before I looked into it, I thought they would only melt in summer, you know, like uh, for the northern hemisphere, like June. July, August, September, something like that. But I found that both for uh, Antarctica and Greenland, they have a tendency of melting, of having a net ice loss in the middle of winter, like February for for Greenland, and uh, uh, same sort of winter months, uh, six months later in um, Antarctica. So like. August or something, and so that happens quite um, frequently. But you have fairly big winter melts, uh, maybe to, maybe to do with the uh, relatively warm uh, ocean currents uh, melting the ice from below. I don't know. Um, so uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is that. Where you suspect, you know, where previous years have, let's say, an uh, Antarctic melt, net melt, and a Greenland um, net uh, gain for previous years, uh, then you can, for the latest year, uh, as data come in, you can uh, all of a sudden get a total flip of that, so that Antarctica is gaining and Greenland is melting in the same calendar month as used to have the uh, the other um, the other setup. So, yeah, it may be, of course, it may be to do with the data quality, but this is um, uh, satellite-based. Um, gravitation uh, measurements, uh, so I would tend to, to trust the, uh, the measurements and, and uh, rather go with real life, real happening changes uh, in to, to, to what the months uh, show a net melt or not. Uh, but that calls for further study, as they say. Okay, so for the moment, or for the data from December, looks like uh, Greenland is back in charge again, but this may, this may change uh, even next month. Okay.